We're back, and we are thrilled to have one of our favorite guests with us for the concluding two blocks of this program to talk in some detail about what is happening in Ukraine, why it's happening, and what its implications are going to be, not just, again, for the people there, but for us as well. And, needless to say, what is the rest of the world going to do about all of this? His name is J.R. Nyquist. He's one of the most brilliant strategic analysts I know. He is the author of uh, The Third World War. He is also a contributor to, among other places, Epic Times. And his own web blog, um, jrnyquist.blog. Jeff, it is great to have you back. Thank you for taking the time to talk with us about this surpassingly important well, invasion that is underway at the moment at uh, Vladimir Putin's instigation in Ukraine. Give us your sort of situation report, if you would, on what's happening there at the moment as we speak. The Russians are only able to invade slowly because the ground is a soft ground mud condition and the air is overcast, so it's not ideal for offensive operations, which is very unusual. The second half of February was supposed to be frozen, but the cold air went into North America instead of Russia. Um, right now, they have flanked the Ukrainian line in the east. They have surrounded Mariupol, which is the southern part of that line. Um, I understand that the water and the electricity have been cut off, and I, I would expect the forces there to try to break out and get away. It's very difficult for the same reason it is difficult for the Russians to advance. It's difficult for the Ukrainians to retreat. And of course, they're also trying to surround Kiev, and there will probably be uh, an amphibious invasion near Odessa. And they are going for the whole country. Uh, and they are using very brutal means because it is mud. They can't maneuver. They're using rockets. They're using artillery. They're bombarding their way. Yeah. And when you talk about they, you're obviously talking about uh, the Russian right. army. And to the extent that it is engaged in this kind of wholesale campaign against the entirety of the country, uh, Jeff, are you anticipating that as they get close to and uh, try to take these various cities, uh, whether it's Mariupol or um, Kiev, for that matter, uh, that they're going to um, decide not to engage in urban, you know, house to house, block to block fighting, but uh, simply lay waste to these well, cities? Well, in Chechnya, they did something similar to this. They have the vacuum bombs, the thermobaric bombs. Perhaps you know the Ukrainian ambassador to the U.S. has accused them of using ther thermobaric bombs, and it's it really has the effect of a tactical nuclear weapon, but it's non-nuclear. It is prohibited by treaty, um, but I, I don't think the Russians care. They've always done that sort of thing. Uh, they do want to minimize their casualties, and they've had pretty high casualties so far for what they're doing. Um, so, yeah, I would expect the worst there. They're trying to break the back of Ukraine, essentially. Are you surprised that it's taken this long for them to... Accomplish no, that? I'm not, because I, kn I know about the bad ground conditions and attacking along narrow road axis. This is what you would expect to see, and any military professional in the Russian army would have expected to see it. This is the extraordinary thing, that the Kremlin made a conscious choice to attack in these non-optimal -opti conditions, which suggests to me that something else is going on that he has made a commitment, that he is on a timetable, and that it doesn't matter to him whether this goes fast or slow, as long as he keeps to his commitment, whatever it is in its timetable, and that commitment may be to the Chinese. Uh, we're going to talk about the Chinese uh, after a short break here in just a moment, Jeff, but uh, Putin, I'm told, may have been encouraged to believe that he could attack uh, a minor incursion, for sure, we know about. Uh, Joe Biden alluded to that. Uh, but uh, a woman by the name of uh, Victoria Nuland, uh, Undersecretary of State, I gather, made a trip to Moscow in 
uh, October of last year and may have, uh, like uh, a notorious ambassador, April Glaspie uh, in Iraq on the eve of the invasion of uh, Kuwait by Saddam Hussein, uh, similarly signaled that uh, we wouldn't um, interfere with uh, such action uh, by Putin in this case against Ukraine. Have you heard anything to that effect? And uh, do you credit it? I, I wouldn't think it mattered because, uh, look, this isn't a minor incursion. They're going for the whole country. And when that ground dries, they're going to go for Western Ukraine. Jeff Nyquist, uh, there is a lot of speculation at the moment that the Russians are losing in this uh, invasion and uh, the conflict that has been precipitated by it. Um, how do you assess that situation? As long as their morale holds and their leadership is firm, they're going to win because they've basically flanked the Ukrainians. Uh, all this speculation, you know, they focus on individual uh, engagements, uh, captured Russian soldiers. This is not really indicative. What is a Russian soldier going to do when he's captured? And they also talk about the looting of the stores. Look, that's a good strategy to have your soldiers forage. Armies have foraged for years. It doesn't mean that they maybe didn't plan to have their soldiers taking food. Um, so we have to be careful, a little bit skeptical about these kind of reports. But of course, you know, attacking in this weather, the Russian soldiers cannot be happy about the situation themselves. Yeah. And they have had considerable logistical problems, I think it's fair to say, uh, whether they were planning on foraging or not. Jeff, very quickly, there's another issue here, and that is that the United States has been, um, as we've discussed, uh, not in the lead so much. Uh, the Europeans have seemingly coalesced around a fairly robust line vis-a-vis -vis the Russians. Were you surprised at that? Do you think it'll stand up? Well, that's an interesting time? question. Um, like I say, I think that um, the Ukrainian fronts, uh, especially in the western part of the country, are likely to hold and expand and grow until the ground dries. And the ground isn't going to be reliably dry until May or June. So we'll see this playing out over time uh, unless and until the Russians are able to strangle the major cities and uh, decapitate the government, which certainly seems to be their purpose. Uh, Jeff Nyquist, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, I want to develop with you further, uh, if we can, um, the situation on the ground in, in Ukraine, but most especially how it may be tying into a larger strategy in which Vladimir Putin is engaged with his friends in communist China, uh, Xi Jinping and his agenda vis-a-vis -vis Taiwan, among other things. That and more right after this.